class now. Uh, are there any, so I don't know, I know at least one person tried to watch the video from last time and, and noticed that there wasn't a lot of math in it uh, because I had a little bit of a problem with the camera. So, you're welcome to watch it. A bunch of guys, you guys playing uh, a song called Technical Difficulties. And the telescope. But anyway. Um, it's much shorter than the class, too. It's like two and a half minutes. <laughs> okay. Any any questions or things that I should address before I go on? No? Everybody's good with everything? So there's a homework assignment that's due Wednesday. And you should, if you have problems with it, you should collect them and, and have a presentation, which is upstairs here if you weren't here last week. Okay, so let's pick up roughly where we were. So this might be our last. That's not right. Uh, so last time we were talking about uh, basically matrix algebra. So let me just remind you that if I have a matrix A, an easy one, and a vector uh, B, a vector V, um, 2, 4. 2, 4, then the product I get by taking this times this, uh, plus this times that, nothing to go there, and here similarly, 6 plus 16 is some number, I guess it's 10, 22. And more generally, this is just abstracting the idea of writing linear equations as products of the coefficients and the, and the, the variables as a column vector. And then we can generalize, if we have two matrices A and B, um, then their product is, I think of, taking the matrix A, well A is just here, and thinking of B, so B consists of thinking of it as column vectors B1, B2, up to B, I don't know, K. And I just do this for each of the column vectors. So, and I get the answer. So that would mean that if I did something like 1, 0, 2, 4, 1, 3, times the matrix 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 0. And this would be, I take 1, 0, 2 and dot it with 1, 4, 0. So that will just be 1 plus 0 plus 0 here. And then similarly here, it will be 1, so it will be 2 plus 0 plus 2 here. And then here it will be 3 plus 0 plus 0, and so on. I guess I might as well just do the other one, right? 4 plus 4 plus 0, uh, 8 plus 5 plus 3, and 12 plus 6 plus 6. So it'll be that resulting matrix, whatever the heck it is, right? Any confusion on this? Everybody's good with this? So, notice that if we think of this guy as generalizing 3x plus 2y and 5x minus 4y is the same thing as saying 3, 2, 5, negative 4 times xy, then here we're doing a similar thing. We're saying here, one of these, none of those, and two of those for is, is whatever the heck this is, and this is, and so on, right? So we're just taking linear, com this is just saying linear combinations of these three vectors. And I'm thinking of those three vectors 
as describing for me some kind of equations. So this is really, so a matrix A is just a, a short way of writing linear combinations of stuff, where this stuff is going to be column vectors. All right, because when I write equations like this, I am writing 3x plus 2y without writing the x's and the y's. Now, linear combinations of stuff is another way of writing a function where the variables are linear, they have power 1, and the coefficients are numbers. It's a linear function on higher dimensions. Higher is however many uh, rows and columns tell me the number of variables in and the number of variables out. Does this make sense? Is this it's just stuff, so you can just like it or um, but this is important because we are I mean maybe you don't see this at this point, but this will keep coming back in this class. That we think of really this matrix not necessarily as being this calculational object, but it really represents a transformation. This is telling me a way to combine three numbers to get two. It's a way of telling me that I take x plus no y's plus two z's, and that gives me my new x, and four x's plus two y's plus one y plus three z's, gives me my new y. So this is really a function from 3 into 2. This, this, this matrix represents a kind of a function from 3 variables into 2 variables. OK, put that aside for a little while. And Okay, so we, we know how to multiply matrices together. We know how to scale them by just multiplying everything by a constant. So we can do stuff with it. So for example, if I write a polynomial, well, okay, sorry, eraser. So, so since I can multiply, so for, for, for square matrices, If I have an n by n matrix, it makes sense saying a squared is just a times a. And a cubed is just a times a times a. That's all. So I can, I can talk about the square or the cube or the tenth power of a matrix. And similarly, 3a is either a plus a plus a, which is the same thing as, well, the matrix consisting of three times each of the, yeah? If you have like a cubed, yeah. that's going from left to right because it's not completely. Well, if you're multiplying a matrix, so one should check that the order doesn't matter here because it's the same A. So one has to check that this is A times a squared, which is the same as a squared times a. You have to check this, but it's true. So a, always com a matrix always commutes with its own powers. So one has to check that, but it's true. But if I'm doing a, b, that's not necessarily the same as b, a. But if a and b are the same, then it's true. So this makes sense. If I want to talk about 3 times the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is just the matrix 3, 6, 9, 12. So I can talk about 3a as well. And 
Last time we also talked about a special matrix zero, or O, which is the matrix consisting of all zeros. all zeros. <coughs> so this is the matrix Aij where Aij is always zero. And then we have the identity matrix which is the matrix again Aij with the property that a i j is zero if i is not j and a i j is one if i is j, which is a matrix that has ones down the diagonals and zero everywhere else. Right, because if the row and column are the same, then it's one. And if the row and column are different, it's zero. And last time, I believe last time, or maybe it's just obvious to see, that if I take A times the identity matrix, I get A back. Because when I dot the first entry with the first column, the answer is the, the first column. When I dot the second entry, this this guy with the second column, I get no first columns, the entire second column, and none of the other columns, and so on. So if I take the product A times A, I get A back, and also this is the same as I times A. I think I said this last time. And similarly, A times the zero matrix is the zero matrix, which is zero times A, but also A plus the zero matrix is A. So now I want to specialize the square matrices. And if I, so I, something like 3a squared plus 2a minus the identity, this is something we can calculate. If I hand you a matrix, we can calculate its square. We can multiply it by 3. We can take twice it and add it on there. And we can subtract. So this makes sense. I don't know if it's any good, but I mean, I do know, but it makes sense. So in general, if we have some polynomial, we can actually calculate, even though this doesn't seem to make sense, P of a matrix. We can define this to be whatever happens when I replace A by that matrix and do the calculation. Right, so for any square matrix, the polynomial applied to that matrix makes sense. What it means, I don't know, but I'm not telling you, but it's a thing. We can do it. Yeah? You had like 3x squared plus 2x plus 7, that's a plus 7i. Yes. Okay. So if I put a 7 here, Oops, that was getting on this. Those are the same. So this is P of A. Um, so, so we replace the one here with the identity. So the generalization is the powers of x's become powers of A, and we think of this as x to the zero, which is the identity. Yeah. And we do like pause and multiply. Say again? Can we do cross multiply? What does cross multiply mean in this context? Just like, uh, better than all. Uh, we can FOIL it out. Is that what you mean? We can factor it? Yeah. So maybe we can factor it. Maybe we can't. Certainly, certainly if I want to think of A plus the identity squared, I can do this just like a polynomial, where this will be a squared plus 2a plus the identity. So that, sure. And I can certainly make sense of a plus the identity and a minus the identity and see that that is, in fact, 
uh, a squared minus the identity. So those kinds of things work. But something like a plus the identity over a doesn't necessarily make sense. I can multiply, but I haven't made sense of division. And in fact, division won't always work. It will only sometimes work. Right? Just like you can't divide by zero, there are certain matrices that we can't divide by. So that's something we have to work on, is whether we can make sense of doing division. So here I can say a plus i times a minus i equals a squared minus i. But maybe a squared minus i over a plus i isn't defined. Or maybe it is because I don't know what divide means. Right? Multiplying was easy to define, but we never defined dividing. So that's something... Well, does, think, does that exist in matrices at all? Like, is there a matrix division? Sure. For some matrices, but not for all matrices. So, we have, so I want to put that aside for a minute, but I'm going to talk about it in a couple of minutes. So, and then, then here, so I want to, I can stay here. So we can do that. And another thing that is not so useful in this class, but is extremely useful in differential equations, is not just for polynomials, but we can think of infinite series. So for example, we know that e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus that infinite series, which is the sum of x to the n over n factorial from n equals 0 to infinity. And we can define, if it makes sense, so this is actually the limit as big N goes to infinity of <coughs> of the sum from i equals 0 to infinity of x to the little n over n factorial. So this is a limit of polynomials, a higher and higher degree, as we let the degree go to infinity, added up in this way. So I claim that this makes sense. For a matrix, I can take e to the matrix power. Which, I mean, certainly, this is 1 plus a plus a, 1 half a squared plus 1 sixth a cubed. Certainly, if I stop this somewhere, it's a well-defined thing. And if this limit exists, which is maybe a little work to show, I'm not going to do it. Um, not by division. This is not a one, this is an i. Yeah? Can you take derivative and you mean by the derivative of a? Well, a has to be, well, here this is zero because a is a constant. But I could think of a matrix which has variables in the entries. And I can make sense of, I'm not going to just now, but we can make sense of the derivative. <coughs> but there's lots of derivatives. Because, I mean, certainly I could make sense of, I usually go all the way to the end, but I'll just stay over here for a minute. I could define, for example, A of X is 2x squared, 3x, x to the fourth. I could make that function. And then I could try and make sense of d, dx, from a of x. And not surprisingly, well, what should this be if this is going to be something? This should be the limit as h goes to 0 of a of x plus h 
minus a of x divided by the scalar h. Well, this is going to be fine. This is going to be, well, all of these guys are just going to add to each other in just nice ways, divided by h, nothing fancy there. So this is just going to be 4x, 0, 1, 4x cubed. So that makes sense. What we haven't covered is if I have x, y, z, w, and I want to talk about the derivative of that. With respect to what? What's my variable? So I have lots of derivatives here. So it can get more complicated if we have more variables. And we haven't addressed that yet, but we will talk about that. Sort of thing. So we can certainly think of this is really a function from the reals into the set of 2 by 2 matrices. And this function, it makes sense to push it a little bit and ask how each of the components in the matrix change when I move x a little bit. And this is the way they change. By this matrix, 4x, 0, 1, 4x cubed. Tells me how, when I move x and when I add 0 0.006 to x, how much is it going to change? Well, it's going to be 4 times 0 0.006. Nothing in that one. One in that, or one in that one. And, uh, well, times 0 0.006. So, right? It's going to tell me how that's going to, the infinitesimal change of this matrix when I move x away. I, 
I'm not. I mean, to 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 matrixify my pie. I, you know, I, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> now, I can tell you that e to the i, where i is the square root of negative 1, times pi times the identity is just the matrix with minus 1's down the diagonal. Sure. But that's stupid. <laughs> that's the same equation. That's just as stupid as this one. <laughs> right? I mean, that was, yeah, well, okay. Right? Saying e to the identity is all e's down. We didn't learn anything there. Okay. But there might be some way to make some sense of that. I mean, we could make sense of, for example, the sine of S I N E of a matrix by again using this kind of thing. But I have no idea what that means. It's just a function. Here, the exponential has a nice relationship to derivatives. And so that tells us something, and that's why it comes up in differential equations. But what is the relevance of the sine function here? Well, its fourth derivative is itself, and its second derivative is itself with the sine change. Okay, but you know, so what? So maybe, I don't know. Okay, so I just wanted to throw this out here. You do encounter e to a matrix power in other contexts. So since we can do it, we'll do it. This will, if you take 308, this will come back with a vengeance. We won't really use it much now. Um, or for that matter, if you take even uh, 303, it'll come back, but um, okay, so I wanted to, to say some more about division stuff. So, again, I'm just focusing on square matrices so that I can multiply and get powers and so on. So, if you think about, you know, what does one third mean? So, it's the number. So that 3 times x is 1. And this, is, this is, in fact, if you, if you remember back to, I don't know, when do you learn about fat fractions? Fourth grade? No Something no like that. If you remember back to elementary school, people kind of knew what 1 half was, and they kind of knew what maybe a third or even an eighth is. But if you talk about, you know, five ninths, then <laughs> confuses them. And you could say, okay, I got a thing, and I chop it up into one, two, three, <laughs> four, six. I got a thing, and I chop it up into nine equal pieces, and then I take five of them. Good. And then I have five ninths. Okay, that makes sense. But it's another way of saying that if I take nine of these things together, I'm not going to, and add them up, then I'll have five objects. Right? So this is one way of thinking about it, but it's maybe better to think that nine times five ninths is five. That is, it solves nine x equals five. And it's the unique real number, so that nine x equals five. And Okay, and we have a similar kind of relationship here, except our multiplication can get a little more complicated. So, for example, if we wanted to find, if I'm given matrices, well, let's just worry about the identity matrix. <coughs> so I'm given some matrix A, and I want to solve find some matrix B so that AB is the identity. Uh, maybe I want BA. It doesn't matter. So that BA is the identity. Then I'm going to call this guy the 
the inverse of A, and I'll actually write B is A to the minus 1 power. I mean, here I'm thinking that it's 1 over A, but that doesn't necessarily make sense. But only if there is one. Because maybe there isn't. So, for example, if I take the matrix uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, it doesn't have an inverse. Or 1, 0, 0, 0, that has no inverse. There's no way that I can find another matrix, so I can't solve that this times some matrix, so let's do on this side, I guess, A, B, C, D equals 1, 0, 0, 1. Just not going to work. Because that would mean, that would mean that A has to equal 1, but also 0 has to equal 1. Right? Because if I take this product, I will get A, 0, 0, 0. I have to have A, 0, 0, 0 equals 1, 0, 0, 0. And that's kind of a problem. And of course, I can work up more, less obvious matrices that I don't have inverses for. <coughs> Maybe not. But if I take a matrix like I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 7. Then, since I already did this, and so if I take that and I multiply it by 7, negative 2, negative 3, 1, then this, should, this will be the identity. Let's just check. So 7 minus 6 is 1. Um, what am I doing? Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Uh, 21 minus 21 is 0. And negative 6 plus 7 is 1. So I'm happy. So this guy has an inverse. This guy doesn't. They're different. And so we kind of need some way to figure out when a guy has, when a matrix has an inverse and when it doesn't, um, and well, so of course we can just if we, you know I just take some arbitrary matrix like one two three four, and I want to find its inverse. Uh, well, actually, let's just check. If AB is the identity, and I multiply this matrix, this equation on both sides, but on the right, by the inverse matrix A, then that tells me, since that this equation has to hold. In other words, B is A inverse. So that's OK. But now I can multiply on both sides, on the whatever side that is, the right by A. In other words, that means that the A is also the identity. So if AB is the identity, then BA is also the identity. In other words, it doesn't matter whether I solve on the right or the left. So a matrix and its inverse will commute. So we make sense of the matrix and its inverse. And we don't care whether I want to solve this 
this equation or the other equation. Right, so A, A inverse is the identity, which is always the same as A inverse A. Now, if the matrices aren't square, then, well, we have sort of generalized inverses, and then there's a difference between a right inverse and a left inverse. And but in these guys, if it's invertible, it doesn't matter which order you do it. Okay? Um, okay. So, so, one way that we could find an inverse for One way that we can try and find an inverse, so if you give me some matrix, let's just try one, one, two, three, four, and I want to find A, B, C, D, so that that equals, okay, I can do it that way, equals uh, one, one, zero, zero. Well, I can just write down the equations, right? This is the same thing as saying that a plus 3b is 1, and uh, 2a plus 4b is 0, and c plus 3d is 0, and I've lost track. 2c plus 4d is 1. I mean, I have four equations and four unknowns. So I can solve this for A, B, C, and D. Okay, but also we already saw that we can solve equations by adding multiples of rows to each other and doing all that sort of thing. Right? So I could, another way that I could do this is I could start, I mean I already know the answer. Uh, wait a minute, 4 minus 6, but that's not zero. Um, another way I could do this is I could just say, okay, I'm going to solve the system where I want this to be 1, 0, but I also want it to be 0, 1 in the second column. Right? I did this before when I was just solving equals 1 column vector, but I can solve it equals 2 column vectors at the same time. And so I can just start doing row reductions to transform this guy into something that looks like the identity matrix. And then I will have my answer. Is it clear to people that this is okay? That if I just start row reducing this thing, that will tell me what A is. Well, that will tell me, this will tell me my answers in terms of A, B, C, D. Right? Do you have a question? Okay. So what does that line mean? It's just, if you prefer, you can write them side by side and just keep track of whatever you do here and you do here. So I just put the line in the middle. So remember, I'm going to mess on uh, with this guy, but everything I do to this guy, I'm going to do to that guy. So I'm really going to do the same collection of row operations to both matrices at the same time in such a way that this one becomes the identity, and this one is whatever it is. So let me do that. So I'm going to take three times this row and subtract it from this one. Oh, sorry. So if I take three times this row, I don't know. I don't have a way to write that. Minus the x. So I'm going to take three times that and subtract it from that. So this stays the same. But this guy becomes a 0, and then this is a negative 6 that I'm adding to a 4, so that gives me a negative 2. And then I have to remember that that's what I did, so I have a negative 3 here. Is that clear what I did? I just took 3 times, let's just label this uh, R1 and R2, 
And so this is still R1, and this is minus 3 times. This is R2 minus 3 times R1. Excuse me. Yeah. A really naive question, but yeah. the, uh, the 1001 on the right side, was that just chosen as an example? No, I want to solve. I want to see how to transform this guy so he becomes the identity matrix. Okay. So I'm trying to find the inverse, which is another way of saying, it's, I'm just rewriting this set of equations so that this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so let me, let me say this again. Let me write it the other way so that it matches. 1, 2, 3, 4 times some matrix A, B, C, D. I'm really thinking of this as a pair of column vectors. And I'm saying, I want to know, find A, B, C, and D that satisfies the equation. This dot product is 1. This dot product is 0. This dot product is 0 and this dot product is 1. In other words, it's the same as solving the equation 1, 2, x, y, 3, 4 equals ac, uh, no, ac equals 1, 0, and also 1, 2, 3, 4, bd, equals 0, 1. Because that's what I want to do. Because I want it so that the product is the identity. Because I'm trying to find A times A inverse so that the product is the identity. Oh, and I'm just thinking, solve that equation and solve that equation. So I'm going to just do them at the same time because the process is going to be the same. So we're specifically trying to find the inverse. Yes, exactly. If I wanted to find it to be something else, I could do this with something else over there. But once I have the inverse, then I don't need to work anymore because now I know put anything there. But specifically, I'm looking for the inverse. But I've just broken it up. I'm really doing two problems at once. And we already saw, I mean, I had x's and y's here when we did it before. We already saw that to solve something like this, we take the augmented matrix, 1, 2, 1, 3, 4, 0, and we mess with it to get rid of variables. So we mess with this to turn this into 1, 0, 0, 1, and whatever I get here. And so I'm going to do the same process here. I'm just doing it with two rows at a time. Yeah? What happened to that is two columns? So I'm really solving this one, and this one at the same time. <coughs> but since whatever I do to turn this into 1, 0 is going to be the same for both of them, why don't I just do them both at the same time? Does that make sense? I mean, you're nodding, but I, you, you're nodding like, if you say so. What? How different is the second column? What is that? Nothing. It's just the second column. So you're trying a, a zero on one side and a one on the other, like both ways? I want the, I, so I want to solve the pair of equations. I want to solve this one, and I want to solve this one. Uh -oh. But the way I can solve them together it's just <coughs> doing them both together. All right, so I'm just going to try and pull out of this the identity matrix over here, and magically my answer will appear over here. Now there's a formula, you can just you probably already know it, but it's, it's good to know where these formulas come from. But I've lost track of what I've done. OK, so I have that. And I don't like that minus 2. So now I'm going to divide everything by minus 2. So this will become 1. Actually, I should have just changed it. Oh, well. 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 0. 
and I divided this by minus 2, so this is 3 halves, and this is minus 1 half. <coughs> and now it's easy to kill this 2, so that'll become, just subtract twice this from that, so 1, 0, 0, 1, and so twice this is 3, so that's a negative 2. Twice this is one, so it's one because I want to subtract. Did I make a mistake? Three halves make one half. So my inverse matrix should be that. So it should be true that this matrix and this matrix is the identity. Um, I guess I should check it. Uh, this guy wasn't contributing. I don't know what I did. There. I messed up the board somehow. So I could check that one, two, three, four, negative two, one, three halves. I probably just read something up because I always do. Um, negative two plus three is in fact one, and one minus one is in fact zero. And negative 6 uh, plus 6 is in fact 0. And 3 minus 2 is in fact 1. So it even worked. Wow, I'm really proud of this. <laughs> wow! So, uh, right. Now, I mean, this, this works and it's fine. And everything's great. And of course, you can you can calculate a formula in this way. And I have to look at it because I always forget the way it goes. So in my notes, I was going to do this with a general matrix A, B, C, D. But, but I'm not going to. So if you do this with a general matrix A, B, C, D, and we do the augmented thing, and we mess around, then we will get, and of course I just forgot which ones I changed the sign on, um, those two, D, B, C, A. So I'll get, I should get this, except all of these will have an A, D minus B, C. So, if you start with this and you do all of the tedious stuff to get to the identity matrix here, this is what you'll get. Don't memorize this, but I mean, feel free. Memorize whatever you want. But, um, you'll get something like this, and maybe I've messed it up already, but something like this. So, there's a formula. And, and what's important here is to realize. Did I really get this right? Something looks wrong. Are the signs? Are the I signs think I've reversed? got. B I think I transposed yeah. my life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> D negative B negative C yeah. A. Yeah. So those signs are wrong. Yeah. But it, so it's. For a 2 by 2, it's pretty easy. You just swap these two, and you change those signs, and that's the inverse. So, and then you divide by the determinant, which I didn't define here, AD minus BC. So this is just times Swap the diagonal entries here, keep those alone but change the signs, and there you go. Okay, so if you want to memorize that, that's fine. If you don't, that's also fine. Um, so we can, we can invert a 2 by 2 matrix easily. And this process that I gave over there 
works just fine with the 12 by 12 matrix as well. Um, just it's a long trick to do that. Uh, is there something else I need to say before I do that? Um, so, but you know, sometimes you won't be able to solve this equation. And this comes down to saying it's the same. Well, that if I want to solve, this is a vector. If I want to solve the equation matrix times vector equals the zero matrix, then sometimes I'll get many solutions and sometimes I will get only the zero solution. Right? And so, uh, well, if you think about this, this is the same. Suppose A, so if A has an inverse, then this equation is still true if I multiply both sides by A inverse on the right. But that's the same as saying that this vector is zero, this vector x, or matrix x, is the zero vector. Right, because A to A inverse is the identity, so I'm left with x, and A inverse times zero is the zero matrix. So, if A is invertible, then the only solution to this is the zero vector. And it works the other way too. So in other words, A is invertible, and only if the only solution, I only proved one way, but to AX zero is X being the zero vector. But we talked about that a little bit too. This is the same as saying that the columns in A are linearly independent. Which is also the same as saying that the rows of A are linearly independent. So in other words, the matrix A consists of a bunch of linearly independent vectors. Well, if you think about this statement, this is the same as saying when I mix and match the rows, I can eventually arrive at the identity. Right? Because what linearly independent means, I'm taking combinations and adding them together. Okay, I, I see some confused faces. You can actually say, what does that mean? I don't need talking about it. Somebody want to say that? No. The only solution, I didn't want to write the whole word. The only solution to this equation is the zero vector. But that's the same as saying that the, the columns are linearly independent vectors. The columns of A. And then this is the same, I didn't prove this, but it's the same as saying that the rows of A are linearly independent vectors. So all of these things are the same. Which this is the same, I ran out of room, the same as saying that I can solve. Well, I can reduce A to the identity by elementary operations. I, I, I can do this jump that I was doing over there. They're all the same. 
So invertible matrices are exactly the same as matrices where the rows and columns can't be, you can't kill off one of the rows by adding multiples of the other ones to get zero. Okay. And for two by twos, all right, so that's all the same stuff. And so we also just already saw, except I didn't do the work, so for a 2 by 2 matrix, that's the same. So a 2 by 2 matrix A, B, C, D, that's the same as saying that AD minus BC is not 0. Because if AD minus BC were 0, I would have to divide by 0 in the form for the inverse, so one of the entries would have to be infinity. Now I can arrive at this equation by just manipulating and trying to solve, or I can arrive at it other ways. But let's say I do this. It's, it's there in my notes. Um, I just don't want to do it because I'll screw it up for sure. Okay, so this is an important thing. It's no accident. Uh, so um, you've probably seen this before, and this this guy is the determinant of A B C D. So I haven't defined determinant yet, but this is the determinant of the matrix A B C D which we just take this product and we subtract off that product. Now, a slightly, we can generalize this to higher dimensions. So this is also the area if I take the vector AC and the vector BD, it's the area of the parallelogram between them. So this is the vector. We can, we can crank up this notion of determinant to higher dimensions to deal with 3 by 3s or 4 by 4s or 5 by 5s in an inductive way. So if I have, and we, I did this in an earlier class, but, oh. And the standard notation actually is you write the matrix with straight lines instead of curved lines, and this means Right, if you write straight lines on the side of the matrix, it means take a determinant. You should, you should think of this like absolute values that you the size of. Okay? So if I wanted to do a higher Determinant like this, I have to define it. And so this is actually can be defined in terms of sub matrices. So I'm going to take A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J. I wrote J so you don't think it's the square root of negative 1. It's going to be 
A times the matrix A times the determinant EF, HJ, plus B, no, minus B times the determinant EF, GJ, plus C times the determinant D, E, G, H. In other words, I take, I pick an element and I cross out his row and column and take the determinant of what's left over. Except that, I think this one should have been green. Oh well. Green means minus. So here, if I cross out his row, column, I subtract the green, and then I add, I don't have another color. And I do the same here, and I add that back. So I alternate, plus, minus, plus. So in general, I do plus, minus, plus, minus, like that. And I can expand by any row and any column. So one needs to, so this will be, a times EJ minus FH minus B times DJ minus FG plus C times DH minus DG. Um, and in general, we can define this inductively that for, for any degree matrix, any, any size, mm. I can play the same game, right? So that if I have a bigger matrix, let's just do one. One, zero, two, one, three, four, five, six. Four, zero, one, zero. I'm just going to write the first step. What I do, let's just start with the top row, although it would be easier to use the bottom, is I take 1 times the determinant 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 0. And then I would subtract off 0, so I don't even have to do that, but I will write it. Let me not call it zero, let me call it A. Minus A times the determinant 3, 5, 6, 1, 3, 4, 0, 1, 0, plus 2 times the determinant 3, uh, three 4, 6, 1, 2, 4, 0, 0, 0, so that would be 0, <coughs> minus 1 times the determinant 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1. Yeah. Do you only use like one row? Pick a row. I'm picking the top row. You could also pick a column. And expand along that getting the little sub-matrices. So now to do this, I have to do it again. <laughs> right? So doing a 10 by 10 can be a long process. <laughs> there are more efficient ways. But, right? So, so here, so like this one is zero. This one's easy. This one's zero. And this one is A times, so let me just point out rather than prove it now. I can actually expand by any row and any column. And so this one is 0 because I choose to expand by this bottom row, which is 0 times that plus 0 times that plus 0 times that. Done. 0. That was easy. This one I can expand by this row because that will be fairly easy too. So this will be, well I have to figure out whether it's plus or minus so it's 
plus, minus, plus, minus. So it's going to be minus. So this pattern, starting from the corner, I go plus and I alternate pluses and minuses. Or another way of saying it is if the sum of the, you know, yeah, if i plus j is odd, it's minus, and if i plus j is even, it's plus. Yeah? Um, pardon my ignorance, but so why is that pattern a thing? Why is that pattern thing there? Because it is. <laughs> um, it, it, it has to do with the fact that the wedge product is anti, that doesn't help. Um, <laughs> it just is. Let's just accept it for now. I'm trying to think of a good reason, and I can't. Does anyone know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's because it's because the wedge product is anti-symmetric, but that doesn't help any. Um, What's the wedge product? <laughs> it's because the cross product is anti-symmetric. How about that? Wait, but is that what we're wondering about? Yeah. Well, I'm not doing a cross product here, but it's related to the cross product. It's the same process. It's actually very clever. Yeah. 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 So let's just say because it am. Uh, I don't have a good answer. I should have a good answer. It's, yeah. It's because what it, it is what it has to be. Uh, and so that would be. So this guy. This is, gives me a minus. So that'll be minus. So that was already a minus a there. And then I take here the determinant 3, 4, 6, 1, which is going to be 3 minus 24. So, huh? So I take the row where, except I wrote the wrong thing, 3, 1, 6, 4. 3, 1, 6, 4. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. And so that will be 12 minus 6, which is 6, so this will be 6a here. And here, I can do the same thing here to get uh, the determinant 4, 2, 6, 4, which will be 16 minus 12, which is 4. And here, this is 0. And here, this will be minus the determinant uh, 3, 4, 1, 2, uh, I lost track, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, yeah. So, which is 6 minus 4, which is 2, and that's a minus. So you add them up and that's the answer. Right? So you can do that sort of thing, and I'm running well on time already. So let me just tell you some stuff about the determinants. So one thing that you can check in the book. So if I if I so here's a fact which one can calculate and check. Adding multiple of a row to another or a column to another row or column does not change the determinant. Almost. You can use row reduction, except that remember in row reduction you often will not just add them, but you'll scale them. And here I can scale because the scale will definitely change the determinant. R times the determinant of A is the same as I can multiply any row by R and it will so say that. Multiplying a row or a column by a number R changes the determinant by that factor. Okay, so you, that, you, just have to keep you just have to keep it in mind. So you can row reduce it. But of course, if you could just row, if you could do the whole row reduction process, then every determinant is either one or zero, and we're done. So that's kind of stupid. So we have to keep track that you know when you're solving equations, here, and just a second, you don't want your arm to fall off. Um, 
you know, you, you often do this scaling by R, and we have to keep track of those scalings. And the other thing is if you interchange two adjacent rows, you change the sign. Interchange adjacent guys changes the sign. All right, if I exchange this with that one, that one's stupid. If I exchange this with that, then I change it by plus two minus. Yeah, okay, what was your question? That doesn't mean that you can add a row to a column, right? No. You can add a column to a column, or a row to a row. But you can't add a row to a column, things would get weird. So, you can check all of these facts. I think they're done in the book. We don't really have enough time to do them now. But you can do this stuff. Um, and so that helps a lot in calculating the terms. Because, you know, you can, you can sort of make it convenient to have a row of all zeros and ones by, or at least some zeros and ones, and make your life a little easier when calculating things. Uh, of course, computers are really good at calculating determinants. So you can just type it into Maple, and there it comes, or Mathematica, or any of those kind of guys, and it just falls out. Um, okay. What else do I want to say here? What? Oh, I guess, so, um, should also notice that the determinant of the inverse is 1 over, so if you have a matrix A and you know its determinant, this is the same as 1 over the determinant of A inverse. I'm going to write this way. The determinant of A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A. That sort of just falls out from those observations. Um, and if I multiply two things together, this is the determinant of A. So the determinant is multiplicative in this way. Um, and so here we can add to this, which is not, well, it, it is sort of obvious here because. The rows and columns are linearly independent. If they're linearly dependent, that means I can mush together rows and columns to get one being all zeros, which means the determinant will be zero. So this statement is the same as saying that the determinant of A is not zero. And this is a really critical observation. This is often a lot of times how you check whether a system has a unique solution or not, you take the determinant. And if the determinant is not zero, then you know there's a solution. And if the determinant is zero, then there's not going to be a solution. Well, there's going to be infinitely many. Yeah? Is the determinant of AB equal to the determinant of Yeah. Yeah. Because these are numbers. So this is equal to determinant of A, which has to be, because these are real numbers and real numbers multiplication to move. All right? So, and I don't really want to go through it, so I think I won't. Um, yeah, I won't. So there's a thing, there's a formula called Kramer's Rule. Wow. which tells you how to invert matrices relating determinants and stuffy, stuffy, stuff. I don't, I mean, feel free to know Kramer's rule. <laughs> it's just a little thing that, you know, you can work out, and I can never remember it. And, you know, so it, it expresses the inverse of a matrix in terms of the determinant and sub-matrices and, and all sorts of complicated blah, 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 blah. but 
So, this is about the end of sort of the pure linear algebra section. So we have these tools of linear algebra, and the reason for covering these tools of linear algebra is to be able to talk about matrices and inverses and vectors and things like that. And I'm going to return, starting next time, to doing multivariable calculus because the derivative of a map from Rn to Rm, I have to look, Rn to Rm will be an n by m matrix. So a derivative will be a matrix. Or a vector if one of the things is one dimensional. So when we, when we think about functions from one set of variables to another set of variables, the derivative is a linear map that approximates that function. And so derivatives will be matrices. Because matrices are general linear maps from Rn R to Rm. So we have to deal with those kinds of things. So the reason for this little excursion here into sort of linear algebra that some of which you may have seen in high school is precisely so we have the tools to talk about the calculus we need to do. So in, in some sense this course is multivariable calculus with linear algebra rather than they're not really quite on a leap of equal par, except we can't do multivariable calculus very well unless we know linear algebra. The other, one, the other version of this course downplays the linear algebra more. But anyway, there it is. Uh, this is probably a good place to stop. And you can all go upstairs and see okay, what's another game. Our monster. I know, right? One day.